Okay, today we are going to do a all grain batch sparge and we're just heating up our water right now to put into the mash ton. This is the water that we're going to use for the mash. We're going to heat it up around 170 degrees and we're going to throw it into the mash ton here. I preheated the mash ton before we did this so that it holds temperature well. Uh, I just did that with additional water and um, try to get it to hold steady around 155 degrees because that's what we're going to want our mash to end up at today. So all we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and add our grain to the mash ton. We're going to make sure that we mix it thoroughly so that we don't have any clumps and it's going to do its hour rest. Now the way we determined how much water to use is based on how much our how much grain we're using on our mash. We want 1.25 liters of water per pound of grain. So we're using 10 pounds here, and we're going to be using just over 3 gallons of water. Now you might question why we would only use 3 gallons. Well, we're going to sparge this, <coughs> and I'll show you that step here in a minute. Uh, whenever we do the sparge, we're actually going to be using additional water that we will be running through the grain bed, essentially rinsing it of all the sugars. And that's what we're going to use to get our full pre-boil volume. Now, whenever you do a boil for an hour, you're generally going to lose one to one and a half gallons, depending on your equipment and how vigorous your boil is. So what we're doing is we're going to shoot for six and a half gallons and that's going to you know give us five and a half gallons whenever we're finished with our boil because again you're going to lose some more material whenever you transfer this because there's going to be a cold break and there's always some trub so now what we're doing is we're going to take our first runnings and we're just going to put them back into the mash ton here because if you'll notice whenever you start draining your first runnings you're going to have some grains that are getting through your manifold most likely so we're using the strainer to distribute it so we don't disturb the grain bed and we're just going to recirculate this here and uh, give you a picture of what it's going to look like here after the one hour went by and um, you can see the proteins that are floating around in there that's another part of the conversion that happens whenever you do your mash now I'm going to go ahead and start my sparge and I'm getting water from another pot that I had heated up to a 155 degrees so we want to keep try to keep that temperature whenever we're doing our sparge and just sprinkling it over top I have it draining as well as I'm doing this so it's kinda like a continuous a continuous flow and I have marked you know in the boil kettle approximately where six and a half gallons is so I know when I have enough pre-boil volume so that I'm done. Now a lot of people will tell you to be cautious whenever you're doing this because of a thing called hot side aeration. Um, never had any issues with off flavors that I could tell whenever I just open the valve and let it roll in. I think it's more 
prone whenever you have boiling wort. If you take your boiling wort and you just say dump it into your fermenter, that's when you would get hot side aeration. Um, like I said, whenever you do your sparge here, I don't think we really need to worry about that. Um, another tip, if you want to get your boil going, <coughs> as soon as you get some wort into your boil kettle, if you have it set up like mine, go ahead and crank the heat, you know, get it going. Uh, it'll, you know, cut some time off. Uh, it'll help heat it up a little bit quicker. You want to make sure that you um, keep an eye on it whenever it's real shallow. Whenever you first start to just start up a little bit to make sure that it's moving because you don't want to have any of those sugars caramelizing from the heat of the flame hitting on the bottom once you get some more once you get some more volume in there you don't have to worry about it as much you still want to stir but yeah temperature has more of an even distribution once you have some more liquid in there so as you can see I have a little ring that's going around my boil kettle that's because I'm using aluminum <coughs> there's like an oxide layer that builds up um, that's why it's recommended to boil some water in your uh, aluminum before you start the first time you get your kettle now we already did the boil I didn't show that because you should know how to do your boil if you're doing all grain um, you know your 60 minute 15 minute 5 minute hop additions any additional ones that you decide to throw in um, real quick time lapse of the chiller at work and what it looks like whenever you get a cold break as you can see there's kinda like uh, it looks like there's some material floating around in there and what that does is it is you cool down fast enough it all kinda clumps together and um, show you what that looks like here now as you can see it's clearing out because it's all dropping to the bottom if I move this here you'll see it come back up to the top see that right there that would be your cold break and you want to try to avoid transferring that into your fermenter once you get it all cooled down I usually transfer mine once I hit 80 degrees and move it to the fermenter shake it up as much as I can and throw in the yeast and that is how I do my all grain batch sparge thanks for watching